All right, guys, we're going to do one more thing to the engine. Um, so we have picked up a small oil leak. It's not surprising. It more or less to be expected. I know it's hard to see, but we've got a small oil leak. The oil's resting on the top of the cha uh, transmission. It's coming from the... Uh, it's coming from this plate, backing plate on the on the vacuum pump. So unfortunately, as you can see, in order to reseal this, you have the three Torx bolts, but then you have these three uh, 10 millimeter bolts. I think they're M6 by like 50 or 60. Um, <clears throat> that's got to come off this whole the whole assembly's got to come off to properly reseal that in the first place. So that's unfortunate, not that big of a deal, but you know, that's the only leak I found on the car, whether it's oil or coolant. So that's not so bad, I guess. Um, but another thing, something that was bothering me was that weird, I apologize for the, the hand here, but it, this motor, when it ran, um, it had that weird, kind of reverberation noise it's kind of a low a low rapping noise and it wasn't getting any worse it wasn't it wasn't really that loud but it was certainly noticeable <laughs> and there was one thing in particular i noticed while i was doing it and even looking back in the video when i removed the oil cap our no the noise changed a little bit and then it was very distinctive when I put it back on and and you know and cinched it down the noise started to to sweep almost it, it had a little bit of a a sweep to it um so the vacuum pump on this engine exhausts into the crankcase so that made me think it's maybe it's just a vacuum pump being noisy. Um, it's hard to pinpoint odd noises like that on these on these engines, but that to me is the most realistic cause of that noise. It's just the vacuum pump is a little noisy. Um, another possibility is our fuel pump tap it, the roller tap it. It could be it could have some excessive clearance in the diaphragm it, it's it's the plunger bore itself um, allowing that tap it to to knock slightly in the bore but that I don't think that would have changed with a sudden drop in crankcase pressure you know I also thought maybe it's just the mechanical noise of I mean because we have a four lobe we have a four lobe eccentric on the cam that's driving that roller tap it that drives the fuel pump i thought maybe that's just the mechanical noise of this engine it would make more sense it's the vacuum pump so luckily new vacuum pumps for this thing which it comes with this hole up to this seam this is our the multi-layer steel gasket um it comes with this whole piece it comes with the new driver for the for the for the pump it comes with everything and of course you'll be getting a, a new bore it's a fresh machine bore for our our tap it for the fuel pump considering this has to come back off anyway to reseal it and considering this is an original part to the car with 158,000 miles on it let's just put a new one on i mean that's that's knocking out a handful of potential issues right off the bat i'll probably replace the roller tap it as well I think I found the source of the problem. But that's fine. Unfortunately, still gotta tear all this off anyway because it's leaking. Our 
gasket is coming apart. I mean, it's obviously everything's getting oil, but there's the, I'll get better up close pictures of this or video of this rather. I said the bore looks fine. Everything looks good. And the cam looks fine. You see how much room there is for noise. I mean, this is just the driver. This is just the driver for our vacuum pump. Oh, ah. Dang it. So, first things first, this thing is full of oil. That seems a bit excessive. Uh, first thing I wanted to look at, there's an O-ring on this insert. It's supposed to be one there. And this thing just kind of moves around a little free. That O-ring is pretty flattened. This thing was just, as you, you could hear, it was just flopping around in there. So this O-ring was not making a good seal. So this was not making proper vacuum to begin with. Yeah. Vacuum pump's full of oil. That's how one works. Yes, we're just playing around at this point. It's how a supercharger works. No, it's not, not exactly how a supercharger works. So this little port right here is the intake side. This port lines directly to that right there. Now with this being in the condition is in and with this being flattened out and this just floating around in here, I believe the vacuum pump I can only assume started sucking oil somehow. You can see we have a we have a baffle. I guess I can take that off and we can have a look. So you see these two slots, one's an oval, one's kind of an offset oval. Um, you have this thin piece of metal. This thin piece of metal is acting simply, obviously it's going to be the other way, it's acting as a valve. It's only letting the air go this way, or towards, towards this cavity. Um, you have this retainer which is of course shaped odd, isn't it? It's shaped in a way that allows this thin piece of metal to open up in that direction only. So you more or less understand this is the valve that's obviously going to be on the other side of this. As this vein is moving, it's, again, you have to imagine this, there's a flat cover over this, so it's sealed. It's pulling the air through this vent, through this port which is of course being intaked through this port now as you can, you'll see there's we have this this other port on the back side of the stator or on the back side of this drive now this little flapper valve is going to be on the other, it's going to be on the back side. So that's being pulled closed. Not allow, you know, and so I have a feeling this little piece is wore out. Maybe there was some crud. I'll have to look at the back side of it, but I'm fairly certain that's where we were pulling. I think this vacuum pump was pulling in oil past this valve. That's why this thing was full of oil and obviously not working properly, not creating a vacuum, and creating excessive sound. Um, 
and possibly even why the motor wasn't running as smoothly as it should have been. It was a very small little hiccup here and there, but there's obviously this is not supposed to have this is not supposed to be in a hydrolocked state. <laughs> that would be uh, bad for everything. Um, so again, we are creating a vacuum, creating a vacuum, creating a vacuum. We still have a little way to go. We're still this channel is still open, still open, still open. We've created vacuum right up to this point. But now this this pneumatic circuit is starting to close. But it's under vacuum. We still have a ton of vacuum in this cavity. More or less neutral. It's it's neutral. Except in our case our valve was pulling in oil. Um so what is this doing now? Okay, so we have massive va amount of, of vac of negative pressure, and now what is it doing? It's it's doing its job again on this side. It's pulling in more vacuum, but now we are compressing what was once just vacuum, which is allowing this valve on the other side of this valve to push that way, and it's compressing. Compress. It's not really compressing anything. It is slightly, but it's not a huge amount because this is just pushing out. It's, put, it's, it's pushing it all out, out through that port on this side. And then it's obviously over here just doing the same process over and over again. So, there might be a little more to it with that. I don't really understand the point of possibly this is just for slight lubrication. It may be designed in a way to allow for that. I mean, this looks like it would be for oil to just trickle in here and and, and be picked up by the by the by the vein. There's an oil galley hole there. There's the groove in our drive, and on this side, there's the line for the oil to trickle out into here. I'm not giving you a class on vacuum pumps. That's just basically how this works. But anyway, our problem was this thing was obviously just gushing with oil. That's That was likely our, our big problem. Um, and it was probably leaking out of this seal because it was then trying to pressurize oil. I kind of feel bad for revving the engine now. <laughs> I, I didn't think it was you know, but but again, we're all that force is against some plastic. Uh, you know, it's a good thing nothing bad happened. But I wow, I wrapped that thing out to about four grand. You see where our tappet was riding? It's a little scratched up towards the edges, isn't it? That could obviously create a little excessive noise. If you look towards the towards the edge further further down you can see the markings not bad for 158,000 miles I said we're gonna replace it you know and, and that's indicative of just hot, just wear and tear it slips in here Two rotations of the crank is one full rotation, but one full rotation of the cam are four four applications on the plunger. So not bad for 158,000 miles to only have a couple transfer markings and some scratching. Alright guys, we've got a nice fancy box here from ECS Tuning. First things first, we got another new gasket for the vacuum pump. Got an INA tap it. I know this is not the higher quality brand, but made in Germany still. We have an INA uh, tensioner assembly on the uh, 
on the car as well, the, the accessory belt tensioner. We have two brand new bolts, uh, OEM for our fuel pump. We have another new O-ring for the fuel pump. We have our three mounting bolts for the fuel, uh, for the vacuum pump. And last but not least, we have our brand new vacuum pump, completely assembled. Obviously we need to lube up certain points. Still on the plastic. Uh, this is Hamburg Tech. See how nice and shiny that bore is. This one doesn't, uh, <laughs> this one doesn't move around like the other ones did. God damn, you guys are killing me. But, uh, otherwise guys, we are installation ready. Yeah, it's it's really I don't know it, in person it's it's very quiet. I mean, like I said, you can still hear that noise, but it's not very loud at all. I let it run for just a little longer.
Yeah, that's a much quieter. It may not sound that way on camera, I guess. I don't know. But yeah, it is what it is. I feel a lot better about replacing those components, so. Well, I'm gonna shut her off. Gotta get some fresh fuel in this thing.